Greetings there everyone and welcome back to TNO, the last of the video, probably my favorite mod for Hearts of Iron 4. We're led by, of course, by Takuji. Mod's first name, of course, is Matsuzawa, but we got some things to read, quite a few things to read, and quite a few comms to go through, and a couple of decisions to take here as well, but the labor is ahead. What struck Matsuzawa Tajuki, a Takuji, about the chief executive's office was not the sweeping view of Okoshu in the Pearl River, but the paper. Suzuki's unfinished business, now his, was stacked in towering heaps of paper, planned up haphazardly in the desk, the coffee table on the floor, a miniature cityscape taking root, threatening to collapse from a misplaced foot and errant arm. Matsushita. Ibuka and Imorita hadn't done anything to level or reduce the amount of paperwork, which said plenty about their intentions, Matsuzawa thought bitterly. After gingerly wading through the office, Matsuzawa eased himself into the seat, behind the closed, behind the desk. He could barely see the door play, uh, behind the cliffs of paper, closing him off from the world. Minutes passed, where what could he start? Dragged from the burning ruins of Yasuda one morning, only to have the chief executive's duties thrust upon him with no warning, Matsuzawa's world sponsor remembered Yasuda. That would have to be dealt with, too. There was simply too much to do for one person in one lifetime. That's exactly what the dudes want, isn't it? Matsuzawa growled, no doubt the remaining tycoons were chasing profit and seeking an advantage for when the dust settled, and the less the chief executive interfered, the better. But Matsuzawa was neither too kind nor too helpless to let his rivals dictate the terms of his exit. If his fortunes were to be tied to Yasuda's, then it would be on his terms to ensure Guangdong would survive however it must. So it's to prove that his benefactor that, there, that he was worth saving. The prioritize these files while we'll be here all night if we have to. And the compromise candidate. You know, I would have missed that snake, mused Ibuka Masaru, as usual sneer hanging out the corner of his mouth if it hadn't been for that mess of legislation he left behind. He, Morita Akio, and Masushita Masaharu were nestled in their black leather sofas once more and said the former nerve center of the Guangdong Civil Authority vacated overnight without a trace. Urgent matters in Tokyo read the official statement for Suzuki Taichi's departure. It was painfully clear to the three tycoons that the whole thing was but a glorified resignation letter. You don't want to talk, hissed Morita. Eyes on the floor, a voice dripping with fury. Any idea on how to fix the riots in your sweatshop? Seems like our great visionary can't weasel himself out of this one, can he? Nothing will come out of this if we all we do is bicker at each other, grimaced Matsushita. Uh, eyeballs dancing from one fellow tycoon to the other. Neither of you would want to buck up for once and take up the mantle, I assume. Because we'll have to nominate a caretaker to clean up Suzuki's hot mess, at least for the time being, man. The less likely a candidate would try anything funny under a watch, the better. Matsushita... His eyes shot to the door. The other two followed a stare to see Matsuzawa, Takuji, having just barged into assembly still recovering his breath. The predatory intent of their eyes didn't escape Matsuzawa. I'd like to remind you, Yasuda's leftover assets must be dealt with before. Fret not, Mr. Matsuzawa. The grimace or grimness in Matsushita's voice evaporated as a smile crept back to his face. I'm sure you everything will be duly arranged. Ibuka grinned and Morita kept on as the hand of fate pushed Matsuzawa, Takuji, towards the forsaken helm. Well, he welcomed our new commander in an unenviable position. First, Yasuda went underwater, imploding on itself and taking the entire Koku Prosperity Sphere's economy with it. Then the chief executive Suzuki fell from grace in Guangdong and was recalled to a greener political pastures to Tokyo, leaving behind a mountain of troubles for his Armstrong successor. It is a job that nobody wants, and thus Matuzawa, already a dead man walking following the collapse of Yasuda, is the right man for the job, but even as in a supremely weakened state, Matuzawa still needs to find a way to convince people to work with him, and Guangdong and the Reb. The most immediate pressing problem <clears throat> is that our regular source of budgetary uh, supply has been cut from Tokyo. Guangdong's fiscal situation is careening towards its insolvency at breakneck speed. Down loss from the removal of Suzuki from the chief executive position is only intensify these trends. Should the situation worsen any further, we can see a general investor route from Guangdong, a death spiral from which we cannot recover. We must choose who lives and who dies in this new Guangdong. Not everyone can be saved, and we will also have to demand that unlucky many suffer, but they must. There's no other choice. But you know what? Um, we have this up here too, so. Uh, Suzuki's a succession. With Suzuki's disappearance, and Yasuda's collapse in ignominy, ignominy uh, Takuji has become chief executive, a poison child thrust upon him by the three remaining tycoons of Guangdong, they, Akeo, Masaru, and Ma Masaharu, know that when the dust settles, they are most likely to be chosen to fill the vacant chief executive seat, and the race to succeed Matsuzawa is already begun, with each filling a role in Matsuzawa's chief executive council. The decisions uh, Matsuzawa makes will be critical in the setting who gets the all-important nomination by the legislative council, his auction, and well because of Yasuda itself. Its mighty empire laid low by the economic crisis that bears its name, Yasuda's remaining assets are slated to be auctioned off to repair it repay its creditors. For Guangdong's government, the auction will serve as an invaluable source of income. For the commission alone, for the tycoons, it is an unprecedented opportunity to pick a clean the carcass of the rivals for a bargain. Whether they're at a fair price or not, someone will walk away with the lion's share of Yasuda's business empire and with it, the loyalty of Yasuda's abandonment in the legislative council. Cool. Yasuda's share, 30% Sony, 30% Fujitsu, 25% Matsushita, and upper auction, 15%. Interesting. Uh, but right now, uh, I've looked around a couple things, different places, and, uh, well, I, there was a guide on the Reddit, and I've kind of kind of followed just a little bit, so. We need to change a lot of duties around here, um, eventually. So we can modernize stuff, but we're going to change duties for more political power. It does increase the police presence, increase the Kenpai influence too, which does kind of suck for us, but. 
Build more political power, so we can actually afford to do things too. Um, this increases Japan's approval, huh? Increases, increases Kenpai type control. Because it's easy to get Japanese export control, so... Uh, we're going to do that as much as we possibly can from here on out. Pretty much downsize them? Probably not. Um, so that does give us more political power, which we do want. Right now, we are at what? Quality, so maybe we should focus more on interest. So, high quality, high interest. This is okay. I don't want, I don't mind decreasing Chinese government support. Eh. I don't want I do not absolutely do not want any more corruption. I don't want to really lower Zhujin support either, because they're pretty decent too. <clears throat> Chinese government support, that's pretty tough by five percent. I don't want any corruption either, like I said. Suppress negative press, we could We could suppress it. Ten mm. percent. 10%, 10%, 10%. Ah, uh, what is this one? Uh, decrease Chinese government support from the state. That's going to be a lot of stuff we have here. We have well, approvals very good. We're near the max here, too, for the cap, so that's not bad either. Corruption is just very high, though, which is something we are going to have to uh, work on getting down. A toast to the future, though. To the new chief executive, Iboka Masaru raises cup to Matsushita's, laughing uproariously. To Matsuzawa's health and good fortune, because surely he has none. At the risk of being impolite, good riddance, Masushita smiled faintly through he contempted himself with a sip of sake where Ibuka drained his cup in a single gulp. <clears throat> Even as Japan and the spheres economy crashed to earth, the removal of two of their mutual rivals, the overbearing Suzuki, and the overconfident Matsuzawa was relatively, absolutely, worth celebrating. Matsuzawa would be too busy digging himself out of the hole Suzuki's left him in to do anything too fancy, Ibuka chortled, and once Yasuda is put down, Matsuzawa loses any relevance. Now it's the perfect time to put her house in order, to restructure your and reprioritize. The future waits for nobody, and I intend to be ready for it. You say that, Matsushita remarked lightly as he set his cup down, as if you expect the future to be yours for the taking. Ibuka's face sighed, and his mirth dissipating instantly. I'm sure the legislative council will be the final judge of that, but they like winners above anything else, I'm sure you understand. The two men looked at each other before laughing and raising the cups again. The friendly competition. How friendly. We could do better here. <clears throat> We're still sending to Japan itself, but you know we'll see. When's Argentina elections? Nothing else we really do for now, which is fine. Um, ooh, the fight or flight. What they did do, Matsuzawa, was beyond vicious. The Morita Akeo declared, his hands still shaking, even in the safety of Sony's headquarters in Hong Kong. Yasuda's corpse is still warm, and they still force a chief executive job on him. Next time, they could come after us. That quickly, Lee Kashim pinched the bridge of his nose, holding his gl square glasses in his free hand. What's their end game? It's uh, two against one now, Morita muttered, we, and we've always been the odd one out. Things only get worse from here. Ibuka and Masushita can have thought of this all the way through, Lee stressed. They'll be busy fighting each other to succeed in Matsuzawa. It's an opportunity, Akeo. One we better not pass up. I don't look forward to facing investors as ex external secretary, but it's the closest to the chief executive seat we've ever gotten. Morita exhaled, bringing his hands behind his head never see if... If I can make myself indispensable to Matsuzawa, we'll be seen as more reliable than either Matsushita or Fujitsu. That's more likely, ventured gamely, putting on his glasses. I'll talk to our suppliers and customers to get the word out, start putting out Leg Ho's feet to the fire. Stanley Ho, too, we'll need him. This is our best chance of making it big. Okay, what do we have to lose? Everything, Morita thought briefly. But that was business as usual, but this time they could win. The Ibuka plan from the next chief executive, the Morita plan, which obviously we want to go to. Uh, Morita Akeo of, which I hope I'm pronouncing right, of Sony, has proposed that we rethink the circumstances we find ourselves in. In order to secure a Guangdong that can welcome back Japanese investment in orders at a rapid clip, once the Yasuda crisis ends, the government should focus its efforts on mitigating the harm of the current crisis on Guangdong's workers and smaller businesses. In other words, helping the Chinese and the Zhujin weather the storm. We can't save them all, but we can convince them to grit their teeth and hang on for, on the promises with a better future. I don't want to lose Japanese approval. 15% is nothing to laugh at, though. Increase Japanese expert support, which actually is probably very good to do, because that's actually pretty easy to get. Hold a massive press conference. 10% here. 12.5. Yeah, we'll definitely do that one then. Ikeda has been elected, huh? Establishing a party or reigns in Tokyo. Advancements in competition of power. Brilliant news from the engineers and executives of Guangdong today as great new computer products have been released for the fiscal year. These new devices hold a great amount of processing power while also taking up less physical space than the last generation of computers. With these developments, a computer will surely become a common fixture in every area of society, both in Guangdong and across the sphere. These ones don't make that sound anymore. Increases more research speed, increases research and development speed by 2.5%, increases Fujitsu product profitability by 25 and increases computational power. Oh, and household electronics too! 
Um, among the new products created for wide release, customers can enjoy new washing machines, dryers, vacuum cleaners, kitchen appliances, and temperature control devices. Now, more than ever, the home can be tailored to the suit to the needs of the people of the new age. We expect these products to revolutionize the way people go about their housework. Hey, that's the inside of the gun. It increases consumer good production factor and construction speed. Uh, it must shoot out profitability. And the establishment reigns, of course, in Tokyo. Chief Executive Matsuzawa. Fukushi folded the new morning's newspaper with a sigh, its headline still lingering in the forefront of his mind, Ikea Masanosuke, sworn in as Prime Minister. <clears throat> oh, crap. It wasn't a surprise, not really, even though the Yasuda Christ had ripped a gaping wound at the heart of Japan's political staff, which had proven to be just a flesh wound in the face of the sheer weight of the Ikea's faction that YSK. No, it's just a disappointment. The incestuous, nepotistic nexus between Japan's politicians and industrial mavens would continue. With all the corruption that it entails, sure, Prime Minister Ikea might think some token reforms, even turn his attention to the Keoiken. For brief moments of time, but the Guangdong would continue to be neglected as it always had been. Granted, it might not be so bad. Nobody wanted to see the likes of Suzuki being imposed by Fiat from Tokyo again, but there was nothing worth celebrating either. Just another day in Guangdong. So, you know, more Kenpai Tai here. Oh, and there we go, the Philippines. 70. That's not bad. Milling's okay. God dang, this corruption is really bad. Real for important independence. War for independence. Oh, they're still fighting down here. The critical path. Look at this. They're still fighting down here. Jesus. Chief Executive Matsuzawa <clears throat> set aside the final ledger on his desk, blinking hesitantly to stop his eyes from drying out under the glare of his desk a lamp. Guangdong's finances were an utter disaster. The budget was utterly outdated, bleeding red ink even as the coffers were nearly drained dry. Every day, Matsuzawa spent orienting himself for days lost in the fight to stabilize a ship of state. Matsuzawa stood up and warily dragged himself to the window, pressing his forehead against a cool glass as he surveyed the flickering lights of a city on life support. There would be no time for grand speeches against or before the Legislative Council. There would only be a desperate scramble to pull Guangdong out of freefall to save whoever could be saved. It was all that mattered. Guangdong could still be saved, even if Yasuda could not. Triage would be the name of the game. Morita and Ibuka have been arguing for hours on end whether or not to funnel what little emergency budget remained to reassure the workforce or to stabilize the companies, while Matsushita were played referee. All three of them looked at Matsuzawa to take responsibility and act, even as a scheme to be a successor. Matsuzawa smiled wanly to be needed, even as a fall man, was to have some measure of power or control, he would gladly leave his suit's management to his deputy. And its fate to his incompetent superiors in Tokyo here, he could still make a difference. <clears throat> Throwing with Morita, we are nothing but workers. Throwing with Ibuka, or to our principles, we remain true. Triage. And more growth, that's not bad. Increase Chinese support, though. Increase Japanese expat government support, huh? Well, we can't do that one. Delay them. That's not bad. Increase the Chinese opinion, too. Revise the Labor Standards Act will be delayed until further notice. The Morita plan. God dang, I want more political power. Promise for the future. Keep the workers working. No one shall go hungry. Oh, 0.7 more growth. Slow down the collapse. 0.5%. You get more Zujin support, which is not bad. That's hard to get, but that's every state. Um, but every state gets more here, too. So we'll probably do that one. But a promise for the future. Let's do that one. And then we'll go down to delay it. And the, or a promise for the future. In the midst of economic crises, things are, times are going to be tough. There's no way around that. As difficult as it sounds, though, we can navigate around these complex problems we're working to ensure the impact of the fall is punish the workers and who keep going down and running. Even as investors are grow skittish and shy in the face of falling profits and flocking shareholders. By no means will this be an easy task, where we must make cuts and will promise that they only be temporary. It's a great reward for our workers by the end of the tunnel. They need only hold on and bear with us. Hang on, hang on, hanging on the telephone. The night air was uncharacteristically warm as it wafted through the window of Gia's apartment, like an unwanted house guest which had just spied the prize silverware. Gia picked up the fam picked up the fan from the corner of the desk and began waving it back and forth, not removing his gaze from the telephone for a second. It was all quiet, save for the occasional creak of furniture or the passenger's hacks down below, making their nightly prowls. He, meanwhile, continued to wave. Unable to bear the perpetual inertness, he fumbled for a pack of cigarettes and walked over to the window. The light of the moon bathed the top of his face, forcibly prevented from reaching the bottom of a wellspring of neon. Across from him, the window railings were locked in a delicate but fatal embrace between the iron and oxygen as electricity coursed through the grand floors below, forming the shapes of procla proclamations and commandments, however. It was no far past the call last call, and the taxis and fitting shadows fl at the street's edge provided the only clues to a c continuity of human existence. He put the cigarette to his lips. The phone rang, Gia cursed, and went on and left the receiver to his ear. Hello, he said. Our friends are making a drop off at Takshing Street in an hour. Two trucks in a car, maybe four men. Disguised as a routine delivery, you know what to do. The phone cut out. It was, that was it, then. 
He stretched his arms forward, looking for an intricate set of tattoos, then reached for his pistol, another day at the office. The world as is. The first sound of how things were different was a police cordon. A gaggle of officers herding the Kai Hin Maru's occupants to the holding center of the shipping containers. Steel prefabs and worn tarps, a prison in all but name. Where the Yakusawa, Yasukawas, who had once been discreetly whisked away by a limousine, here they disembarked among a horde of destitute Japanese salarymen, housewives, and children, shuffling forward as a Chinese dock worker sneak glances at wither withering contempt. A brief few yelled profanities in a language that the Japanese didn't understand, but each word bowed their heads or bowed their shoulders further in shame. The Yasukawas were finally marched in front of a beleaguered officer who recited questions in tired accent of Japanese. Papers, please. Where they were from, what was their business? The Baron blustered of his familiarity with the chief executive Suzuki to that. The officer cracked a cold smile before looking at Yoshiko, Yoshiko warily. She wished she could disappear into the shadow of the checkpoint, embarrassed. The officer's demeanor changed as he examined their trunks, quickly undoing their paltry attempt to hide what funds they had left. After a short silence, uh, the officer took a thin sack of bills, a thousand yen, and closed the trunk. <clears throat> I suggest you find a hotel in the city, though it's not safe here. The officer stamped the Yasukawa's passports, leading, clearing them to enter Koshu. He didn't even return the bills he had taken. When Yoshiko opened her mouth to protest, her father quickly pulled her out of the checkpoint, and Yoshiko had seen enough to grasp why we are not welcome here. Yeah, work on that political power, Jamaica States and the West Indies Federation. Shh, that's how I Honestly. You get more political poverty with that one. Because it's oh, so close to the cap, man. Yeah, we got options here. I guess we wish we had more. Problems for the future, though. Ah, oh, I got some comments to go through, too. But we have much to read, though, too. Um, someone says, Morita, by the looks of it, is a reformist in this sense. He supports Zuzhen, not the Chinese as Chinese. So more with Zuzhen. Uh, change of course, though. Oh, yeah. Uh, you look uh, well, Chief Executive, Morita Akeo said stiffly, said stiffly, hiding his surprise at the cleanliness of Matsuzawa's office. Last time he'd been here, Matsuzawa had been left facing a forest of papers, and he'd gone through all of it, everything. The offered tea, the vacuum carpet, the reasonably empty desk showcased the man back in control. Thank you, Matsuzawa replied. Flipping through a report, Morita's proposal to save Zuzhin businesses and Chinese workers most impacted by the fallout of Yusada's demise. That plan is critical for Guangdong, Morita asserted, inserting himself into Matsuzawa's thought process. Our success is fueled by the subcontractors and employees, none of which can survive. Stop. Matsuzawa held up a hand, bidding Morita to stop. I know what you wrote, but I'm not convinced. What do we gain by throwing the workers a bone? Isn't this just for your sidekick Lee and his bleeding heart talking through you? Morita took a deep breath before replying, endlessly. Squeezing the Chinese who outnumber us just paints a bigger target on her back. Suzuki thought so, too. Suzuki's pro prolificacy, Matsuzawa noted acidly, also caused some of her issues. But his conclusions were correct, Morita pushed back. The status quo is unsustainable, Matsuzawa. To dismiss that because of Suzuki's other failings would be utterly short-sighted. It's time for something new, my friends. 15%. Expat. Oh, this would be... Yeah, we'll probably do this one next. Just need a little bit more political power. Down a bit. I don't mind doing this one. Have you just sacrificed? Just... Ooh, that sucks. We lost that. Just a little bit of approval for 15%. That's pretty good, man. Product release in 19 days. Well, we do that. 20 days. Well, that's not worth it, then. But we can't do it in time. Five days. Five days. More interest. Product quality is great. Interest is 77%. Hmm... 10 days, 12 and a half. I'm not going to get any more corruption, I swear. No more corruption. That's 20 days, though. 5 days, 10%. 5 days. You can sacrifice and get a total of uh, Chinese and Zhujin government support. If we do both of these, we can get 17 and a half more percent. I think we'll do that one for this time. So I think that probably be for the best. So that should hit it pretty hard. That should be pretty good for us as I'm learning more how to do this. Now, Suzuki's ill-time triumph. Uh, Chief Executive Suzuki spent much of his time in office attempting to pass legislation to enact working conditions reform. Although the bills brought to him great attention, they are now a burden for the business as they operate in and throughout the uh, Pearl River Delta. Simply put, the costs are too high. It's undesirable that we hinder the performance of corporations hiring, manufacturing, and selling Guangdong. Let's say fleece elsewhere in search of profits. Something must be done before we reduce the rags because we idolize out-of-date laws and regulations. 
keep the workers working. Or to, oh, to shoot Bob and delay the RLSL. Former chief executive uh, Suzuki's magnum opus, the revised labor standards ordinance, was no doubt a great achievement of his time and guaranteed the long-term continued stability of Guangdong's industries. That was long overdue, sadly. This time, and that time in case, would no longer apply to her current dire position. The RLSO would become an extra burden upon her already struggling finances, if ever fully implemented. So it's necessary that it would be delayed uh, due to the current situation, as we do not wish for further strain to fall upon the existing Japanese and Zhujin businesses trying to meet its requirements. Of course, after we move past the crisis, the RLSO shall be implemented accordingly. At least that's what we're going to promise to the people. The feature will be better. The Pine Asian Project is one of Enterprise, the radio player in the shop, empty except for uh, Wong uh, Kai Lok and his gaggle of employees. Our present difficulties will soon end, and when they do, the government stands ready to put people back to work. Uh, applicants can receive unlimited funding to maintain their payrolls at half pay. Can you get a load of that? Zhang all but spat out the radio before turning to Wong. The Japanese store landed our money, and now they wanted to play nice? Wong regarded the young Chinese sympathetically. I'm sure they have good reason. When are the camp by Tai Thugs? You need a reason to do anything, Zhang hissed, stabbing his finger in Wong's chest. Look at this place. Nobody comes here. When we go under, some Japanese vultures are going to come in and take all this too. How do you think I know how do you think I still have money to keep all of you here? Wong didn't flinch at Zhang's anger. You whatever money the government will give us, I'm taking it. You don't have to believe them, but we have to take what we can get. Hanging by a thread but still hanging on. Decreases Japan's approval by five percent, wow. But everyone's saying increases tribe control, increases Japanese Zujin and Chinese support in quite a few different areas. Triage. No matter how he crunched the numbers or rationalized expenses, Chief Executive Matuzawa cannot escape the gravity of Guangdong's budget hole. All consuming and seamlessly bottomless, there can be no talk of saving anything in Guangdong without adjusting the elephant in the room, the revised labor standards ordinance. In a better time, Suzuki's role, sole achievement, have made of eminent sense to offer a carrot while weed in the stick, especially when Guangdong's police were woefully inadequate to do the latter, but Matuzawa had seen how much Suzuki had spent to secure his legislative victory, and there was simply not enough left to enforce what was on the books. Was well, Suzuki wrong, though, Matuzawa idly tapped his fountain pen against his draft proposal to delay the RLSO's provisions? Even if the immediate circumstances had changed, the fundamentals had not. When the economy recovered, there would still be time and money enough for Suzuki's last words to be honored. Ibuka hadn't agreed when he had, they, when he had ever. Assuming a return to normalcy is a full mistake, I'd argued. Adapt or die. Surely the end of Yasuda has taught you that much? Well, those words had come with a proposal to repeal Suzuki's act entirely, to redirect funds to more productive uses, or so it was said. The irony that Ubuka's adaptation to look entirely like how Guangdong had operated before did not escape Matsuzawa. Suzuki's legacy would not escape him, of course. Here we just Ooh, incredible product quality. That's really nice. But what else? Do we have anything else going on? We have 11 days. Nikes. We have 11 political power. Can we do anything else? We can get 5% more quality. Because it takes an average of 5% more. we well, actually boost it up just a little bit higher. And that's the last we're going to spend for this one. So, as the guide said, as I read on Reddit, you should spend more time doing, not downsizing, but like, basically getting rid of the police. To a degree. <laughs> Which is not good, but whatever. Caution. Blood force policing is not good. You see the crisis. Jesus, spare us. Culture of corruption, the finest money can buy. Oh, not good. How are we looking at it right now? Oh, shh. Oh, my God. Oh, we're not going to be able to make it, are we? Someone asks, did they add Viet Minh? That's a good question. I have no idea. It is 1963 still, so we're slowly trying to get through all of these. And we definitely need more political power. So, Viet Minh, I don't think so. I could be wrong. Oh, look at that. A new phase. Faltering establishment. Imagine independence. Oh, wow. League for the Independence of Vietnam. No, nothing there. Thailand? Does Thailand have anything? They have directless revolution. Flowing waters, bright lights, and paved roads. Cool. A military roulette. Oh boy. And the Thai Renaissance. Nothing there either, so. Delay it, delay it, delay it, and then keep the workers working. As we find ourselves occupied with a myriad of issues plaguing the nation, and the very last thing we would need right now is a horde of unemployed Chinese and Zhujian workers spilling into the streets and demanding their slice of the pie. Our government is woefully underprepared for the wild chaos of protesting and violence, and is desirable that we avoid it in its entirety. We regard it as the best social stability across Guangdong that workers stay at their stations in some way, in shape or form, keep the lights on for when the business resumes, and to keep the riots from breaking out across the cities, our assurances to the working classes will have, to, of course, to do. Someone that says, it would be a, would there be a second playthrough where you focus on one corporation that has a mission to develop PC technology? That would be Fujitsu, but I'm not sure. I'm sure I'm going to play this like at least four or five times. There's like four, like maybe five different paths for Guangdong, and I really want to explore them. Delay it. Good. As you should. Um, actually, can we just push it out now? Delay oh, we can't delay. Oh, that sucks. 
Show target, sell to no specific market. Well, eventually you can sell to Germany if the Speer wins, apparently. And you can sell to America if the RDC wins, apparently 64 and 68, so. I mean, we'll see. He isn't he's not dead yet, so. <clears throat> no one shall go hungry. The assurance of the needs of the populace and the former workforce will be handled first is their best bet to survive in the horrible situation of the Eastern Crisis. Having managed to guarantee enough supplies and opportunities to our people now, it will surely allow us to step out of the crisis with an able and diligent workforce that would make our economy thrive and propel a nation to greater heights. Therefore, our most important obligation will be to attend to the basic sustenance of the people. Even if it's an immense cost for finances, it will surely put us in great position for an expeditious and guaranteed recovery. On and on it drags, though. John thought it'd be all over. Oh, how we put up with it all. The maddening screeches of drills, the blooming crooks of the foreman, the calluses blossoming in his hands and palms, just to secure another paycheck for the family, another care dangling from the citadel lace and gold, yet the RLSO was gone. In this place, yet another broken promise, another indefinite postponement, the storm lingered on, suffocating the rainbow in his tenuous clutch. John thought it'd be over, he really did, but now he could stand no more. He found himself indulging in the cacophony of shouts and curses converging upon the Guangdong government complex. The pearly moonlight dancing and carefree among the tide of bobbing, shrieking heads, aching to spill over the stripe of blue uniforms, coordinating the pavement. As gaze flickered from the khaki cord, horde, stationed down the boulevard with mouths strewn all over their faces, to the officer in front of him struggling against his shoves and pushes, with features the same as his own, yet none of a sense of effing dignity. How many times would I tell you, Deathlot, our parents, our children, that we're all starving out here? Herod himself spat, acidic fury swirling up his throat. Why don't you tell your mighty dog masters to give a darn and come down into the skies, from the skies, and talk to us, and not just keep doing the jack all sitting in their own horse crap? Another shove against the baton, answer me. As if we had a choice, the officer's bells were almost drowned amidst the havoc, yet they found their way into Chun's ears, nonetheless, as if the gosh darn pay cuts aren't enough. Then the whistle blew, and the men in the lappies ready the batons. John would have to could vent his rage, his sorrow, and frustration to the night sky of all he wanted, but he cooled his mind, recomposing himself, and withdrew from the dispersing crowd. Now was not the time. Not when the weight of his family rested on his shoulders. A once in a lifetime. An entire horde of no gooders threatening to get their paws in the gosh darn government itself. And what did you and your buddies do? Sergeant Fujiwara's boisterous howls reverberated through the ill lit alleyway and crashed down on Lam Hao Sion's face, swinging around her batons and handcuffs and doing F all, and here we expected her esteemed ideal officer, Hayashi Kosen, to perform his sacred effing duty, for heaven's sake. My apologies, Sergeant, but the orders were called explicitly for restraint. Lam, honorable service, officer that he was, gave his perfunctory reply without so much as twitch on his face. Orders, orders, first to pay us now all of this. All these ninety plus men had been Chinese, his own kin, and it was a cruel reality, not wanton malice had been forced them to the cordons. What could he have done possibly brought himself to do, even if the orders had been otherwise? How could he have possibly swung his baton upon his fellow countrymen struggling before him, confiding, confiding in him, with youthful yet worn out face he swore he had seen somewhere else before? What BS? Don't tell me you brought bought into Matsuzawa's good Samaritan nonsense, do I? The middle aged sergeant widened his eyes in utter bewilderment, breath running short and face red as apples apples? No enough. I don't want any more excuses, any more unwarranted leniency thrown to those savages. I could catch you half eating it half bo booting your job again, Hayashi, and you have earned yourself a demotion. A sergeant shot Lam one more ugly look before snapping away, once a mutt always a mutt, he grumbled. Not even trying to lower his voice. Lam, respectful officer that he was, stood, stood yet perfectly still. Posture remaining at a perfectly Perfect, 90 degree angle and gaze fixated on the sergeant's back as he plodded away. At the very instant the man stepped into the sunlight and well out of Isha. Dieu le lomo, immediately the expletives has to his teeth. F your mother. Same as ever ever was. Same, same, same. Let's see what this uh, product release deadline is going to be like. So right now we're at zero days. So we've gotten up to 88%, 75%. The TV5, 303. Now, traffic to the bus again! Go a while to ball his fist into a f hands into a fist. Finding the urge to smack the truck dashboard in misguided frustration, and if we're gonna be late, I wish we really had done something decent. Or had something decent. Heard the top 20 songs 20 times each, that's for sure, uh, uh, Mehara grunted, taping his cigarette out ash out of the window before reaching into the glove box. Why don't we do something different for a change? I got my own smokes, Kawada started before his voice showed off as Mehara puts a metal box on the dashboard with a thud. I don't need a super sized ashtray either. Not an ashtray, Mehara carefully pried a metal antenna loose from the metal casing, making sure it pointed skyward before pressing a switch. You wonder what's on TV? You can't. Uh, Kawada saw the mid-sentence as the box came to life with a click. A grainy, black and white image projected onto the glass screen with several figures scurrying about on the five-inch screen. Don't get too excited, Mehara chuckled, even if, if I can bring the TV with me. That doesn't mean anything if there's nothing good to watch. At least that uh, wasn't Sony's problem. Due to our product cycle reaching 83% average, pretty good with the product quality, interest, and... Profit, product of profitability reaching 112%. That's pretty nice. Increases Sony's leg co seats by two. Uh, the product cycle National Spirit will be giving us 2.33% real GDP growth, 5% GDP growth, 1.16 billion miscellaneous income. Because we're marketed towards Empire Japan, 
Um, increases Japan's approval level by four over four percent. Decreases China's government support as well, unfortunately. Um, due to future larger product requirements, our initial product quality interest minimum maximums will be reduced by five percent. Cool, god dang, that sucks. In the meantime, before we do that, so we're at eighty-three percent. We lost five percent, so we basically gained it back. Yeah, almost. Nice. I do want to do that one, but this one's more worth it. Even though I don't want more Yakuza control. That's not. That's not. Oh, hello. Look at this happy guy. Ah, beautiful. Ah, the Yakuza have control, which I don't like. Yakuza. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna definitely lower that one next. Keep the workers working, though. No one shall go hungry. It's our time to start stockpiling more political power. Suzuki's legacy. Suzuki Taichi was and still a complicated figure for Guangdong. He had resigned in shame and disgrace after news of his failures broke loose, but that does not mean he was completely defunct in his thoughts and ideas. Guangdong had, for a very long time, focusing on meeting the satisfactions and the desires of shareholders and investors, granting it temporary benefits at the expense of neglecting and undermining the needs and interests of the territory. Guangdong itself, ultimately, Chief Executive Suzuki, would be a decisive figure for quite a long time, but it is better to retain some of his legacy to guarantee prosperity, harmony, and growth in the years ahead. Because of Japan's approval, which does suck, but... Chris is government support, which we do need. Um, some other comments include, uh, Now that you reach Matsuzawa's focuses, there are steps to let Morita into power. Uh, first step, we choose his plan, which is obvious. Slow down the clouds and no one shall go hungry. Well, obviously, we're going to go with no one shall go hungry. And then after this, two separate focuses will appear. Sell you to the stock uh, and limiting collateral damage. You'll do the focus where you can give all the money to Guangdong, or giving them less while keeping some of them. But uh, this person recommends you give all of it to uh, Guangdong. After this, you get another focus. We'll sell stocks too, of course. Sell, sell the stocks to Sony. Makes sense. So since after you sell the stocks, then you have to limit the collateral damage that's affecting Guangdong, the Japanese immigrants, and the high crime rate. You let the Japanese in or kick them out, though I recommend you let them in. After this, you'll let the police force do their job, crack down any dissent, including the triads and Yakuza's activities. So we want the police to let the Japanese Im uh, immigrants in. After this, you get the option who would like to take you to the seat. Chung Kong, of course, they're Sony's allies. After you did all this, you find that Marie to become the chief executive. And someone else replied, these steps are easy as crap if you just read the focuses. Lol. Yeah. And another person's come and said, oh, all right, go Morita's plan to slow down the collapse. When Morita becomes chief executive, you must plan carefully because of the time limit before the oil crisis uh, hits. Before, though, you need to let the police control all Guangdong because the police stop the riot and keep both Japan and China happy, at least you can. If you fail to stop the riot, Japan will send the army to control Guangdong, which means you lose the game and start over. Oh. Huh. Okay, so we're kind of screwed in the end. Recognition. Standing on. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow. On the 12th floor of the headquarters of Sony Japan, Morita gazed down with barely concealed satisfaction at the footpath outside the entrance of the building. A couple of photographers, young by the looks of it, were scurrying around outside taking pictures of the building from various angles. B-roll for a newspaper article. One spotted him at the window and quickly angled his camera towards him. Morita smiled and gave him a quick acknowledgement before turning away from the window. The numbers were good. Very good TVs. Audio players, radios, all were flooding into the country at an astonishing pace. Cheaper and better quality than the stale tripe offered by the Zaibatsu, the growing Japanese middle class couldn't get enough of the Sony's products. The image was clear as day in Morita's mind. Zaibatsu headquarters in up uproar. Interns dashing around, hiding to and avoiding the wrath of the enraged senior executives. As Sony ate away at their margins, they would be forced to make layoffs. Turfed out to the sinecures. Trim the fat. Undoubtedly, many careers would be lost. It was all enough to make Morita's heart beat a little faster. All to plan. Hey, we actually have a surplus now, and we have some very good growth, even though inflation is increasing too, and poverty rate is getting worse, but we're not going to talk about that here. Uh, well, not too much, at least. That wouldn't be bad to do, but I don't want to decrease Japan's approval too much. As I can see, though. Breaking even. Oh, the bleeding has stopped just. Reflection of the chief executive, more growth, less inflation. The R GDP malice for the national spirit, you should crisis will recover by 0.5%. We stayed out the worst for now. The economic freefall is grounded somewhat for the halt, thanks to our swift and timely decisions on which sectors of society prioritize salvaging, and on the future of the revised labor standards ordinance. It's not sure to feel tempted to breathe a sigh of relief, yet all is not well, far from it. Prospects of our fiscal recovery remain out of sight, with the most cynical of our benefactors already drafting up plans of escape. Phantoms both old and new arise from their slumber, their screeches echoing across the urban skyline and through slums and shanty towns, and their haunting presence seeping through the fabric of society we have so meticulously woven together, and amidst all the burning wreckage lies you see a rotting car carcass. Lay bare on the streets for the vultures circling on all sides to sweep down and dine on. Suzuki Taichi left behind a, him a freighter collapsing under its own weight and riddled with gaping holes, and it's up to us to funnel all that we have into the patching it up. Wong Dong shall never sink into oblivion as long as there's at least one man still standing at its home. 
Waste not n knows, uh, waste knows not intent. The phone rang insistently from behind the door, tri trilling mockingly in Chief Executive Matsuzawa's ears as he struggled to comprehend the numbers in front of him. A secondary poked her head in the empty office before hurriedly retreating from his not a brown twisted frown. He would be accepting no calls today. The experiment Morita's idea, he reminded himself, has started so well that the trial soup kitchens and distribution centers had kept desperation, true desperation, the kind that leveled cities and bred anarchy at bay. The poppers had lined up to buy foodstuffs, provided at market low, below market costs, and orderly rose and with words of gratitude. <clears throat> Then the lines are growing longer, snarling traffic as a snake around city blocks. The overstretched government workers struggle with greater hours required to service a growing swarm. Food shipments to outlying cities rot in the heat, bottlenecked by potholed roads and overgrown trails. All the while, Guangdong's food stores empty at a breakneck pace, with local producers having long since adjusted their prices. Supply and demand are the temptation to scout the government for market distortions have proven too hard to resist, and the consequences were daubed in red ink across the ledgers on Matsuzawa's desk, painting a bleaker uh, financial picture than before. The secretary from before placed an envelope meekly on Matsuzawa's desk from the Chinese consul, consul general. He gave it less than a second's gaze before setting it aside to be buried and forgotten. The gratitude of China means nothing. The Murita plan has failed. 6% of Yasuda's assets to be auctioned have been designed or designated to booth uh, Matsushita um, and Fuji. Fujitsu. Well, that's not good. We failed, huh? Uh. We failed, huh? Well, no one likes failing. Diversifying. Chief Executive Matsuzawa Takuji poured over the mountain of economic and market reports that littered his desk. Each one hammered the same idea home. The Yasuda crisis had unleashed tremendous damage on the Japanese and Chinese markets. Those markets made up the overwhelming majority of revenue for all Guangdong's companies with the requisite realization that only the diversification, diversification of Guangdong's exports markets could salvage the economy, of course. <coughs> Uh, Chief Executive uh, Matsuzawa Takuji flipped open the thick report on his desk. A dossier detailing the markets with the greatest possibilities or opportunities for growth, detailing the future Guangdong. Latin America and the Mediterranean markets are best suited for expansion. Neither region has close ties to Germany or, Asia or America yet, reducing the threat of embargo. <coughs> Additionally, investing in these markets may also deepen the ties between them and the sphere, reducing American and German influence by proxy. That's a start, Matsuzawa Takuji said to himself. Flip into the remaining pages of the document. Preferences, the proclivities, and we can handle the research after that. The companies are on their own. Let's explore our options. And now, we've finished breaking even, which is nice. Uh, limiting collateral damage would be good, but we're going to auction off Yasuda's assets. Uh, as soon as collapse, we left the government with an important question. What to do with the remains? Since the Zaibatsu's assets in Guangdong were entrusted with us, the creditors circle our government like carrion vultures, eyeing the assets hungrily. Unfortunately, we can't keep these pieces of Yasuda much longer, with their maintenance costs draining our already dwindling reserves. A solution has been put forth to auction off the Yasuda assets to willing buyers. We could kill multiple birds with one stone. Sell on the assets we would fill our reserves again, eliminate the cost of maintaining the assets, and get the creditors off our backs. The chief executive knows we're here, Baron Yasukawa said the night he and Yoshiko had checked into the Koshu Yamato Hotel. It doesn't matter that Suzuki's gone. Surely Chief Executive Matsuzawa won't turn down a meeting with the Baron, no matter how busy he is. That had been months ago. <coughs> Increasingly, the Baron's confidence had revealed itself as a maniac front. Or manic front. Papering over a heart draining hope. The funds stashed in the trunks dwindled, leaving Yoshiko stretching one meal to three while her father desperately waited for a call that would not come. She read through her father's newspapers in her spare hours, languidly at first, with increasing purpose. Father Yoshiko announced one morning, <coughs> placing a newspaper clipping on his table, a call for writers of the Kantan Fujian Koran, a woman's job requiring a university degree like her own. May I apply for this job? Her request was met with an startled sputter. Work? Yoshiko, there's no need. We can't stay here forever, Yoshiko said quietly. Nobody, not the chief executive, no, not your friends, will save us. <coughs> Excuse me. I can't have you going outside and into that. The Baron pointed outside, his expression pained. A gaggle of street urchins fished. For scraps from torn protest banners and tear, gar tear gas cancers, banishing makeshift clubs to award away the lone policeman keeping his distance. I'll cut smoking, eat less, call again. You won't have to worry about anything, I promise. Hope lasts only as money does. That should be nice. The reflections of the chief executive. Matsuzawa well, wondered there's not a single desk in the whole uh, uh, of Guangdong that was not piled high with paperwork. If such a thing existed, he thought, whilst looking at his own cutlerous mountain, it certainly would not have been anywhere within the government office. Ever since his first day on the job, there had been a stack of work taunting him, and it had only grown from that point on. However, that time is not 
That time had not entirely gone away. The chief executives' outflows were beginning to match his inflows, and the work was only becoming more bearable with the doom and gloom of earlier briefings that seemed to have dispersed recently. Where the decisiveness came clear, it was through cold determination that Matsuzawa had gone as far. In many ways, it was the only thing keeping him going, for everything else he had worked, on, worked for was gone. Yasuda was dead now. There was no questioning that. As carcass had already been gutted and neatly trimmed in preparation for it to be sold off, like a tuna at fish market. Nothing could be done to prevent it, and yet inevitably and mundane, mundanity of what it was to come felt horrific. All the chief executive had ever worked for expired, one day he would, he would do, he would too. Though when that day came, he would know past knowing that he did all he could to avert disaster and damp as his consequences. Soon there'd be one last piece of paper on his desk, one piece of paper that would end it all. His removal from Tokyo would come, maybe then he'll have earned his rest. His purpose would soon be complete too. <coughs> Ah, uh, they're still just waiting around for all this stuff to happen as well, so. Um, hmm. Oh. They are still focusing on this a whole bunch. Uh, of course, over time. Oh, I don't think so. This will be good to do next. Increase triad and Yakuza control will be nice. For almost 50 freaking percent. My god. So after this, because we do get a little more stability, we'll take inventory, I suppose. In order to sell you two old assets, we should determine what assets we hold and how much they are worth. <clears throat> The bureaucracy will organize a conference of lists of factories, subsidiaries, and cooperatives owned formally by Yasuda and determine their respective values. Mm hmm. Let's take a look see. No more, no less. To lie about Yasuda's true value from the mouth of Guangdong's chief executive will be an insult to the top of an injury. Top it off. It will be the wise, of course, is, is, if this is discovered, the government will be in a scout of epic proportions. I have invention of the gain. There's much to be gained here. As the owner of a Yasuda's former assets, it is our responsibility to determine the value of each asset as accurately as possible. Any manipulation of the value will be unfair and corrupt, which are attributes we cannot be affiliated with as of now. Hmm. I'm not sure which one's better, honestly. Stand in the lever. The truck rumbling slowly through the nighttime streets, headlights illuminating what the moon cannot, in the hour of the early morning. There was little human activity besides the escort cars in front and behind, as stray pieces of garbage drifted across Takshing Street as Koiki slowed down, preparing to around the corner. Beside that, the night was still and calm and almost peaceful. The cargo inside was equally silent, and the world was yet unaware of its presence or purpose. Then Koiki saw the man jump in front of the escort car, which came to a screeching halt. Just as the man inside the car opened the window, the stranger raised his arm and fired, landing straight into the escort driver's head. The remaining guards barely attempted to reach for their own weapons before the windows on either side of the street shattered, calling forth the rain of lead and shards. The truck shook from the impact as Quikey ducked for cover, punctured bags of raw opium spilling through freshly open holes in the canopy. His brothers returned fire wildly into the buildings on both sides, setting a couple of bodies tumbling to the ground. Whether they were aligned with their attackers or innocent bystanders, Quikey cannot tell. A wet, flashy sensation enveloped him as his brother in the passenger seat kneeled over, killed over to him, which Koiki violently thrashed off. Without even realizing looking at the road, he floored the gas pedal and the truck lurched forward. He barely even noticed the slam as the vehicle careened forth around the corner. He prayed it wasn't one of his own tr as the truck sped into the black of night, with the goods in tow. So, I'm sorry I keep looking at this. I just want to see if we can change. This is what we're looking for. Change my police duties. So we decrease police presence, unfortunately. Um, we're just deposed. Triads are not great, but I definitely don't want the um, Yakuza here. So we'll see. So we get a little more political power from that, so we can help lower corruption at least a little bit more. It's not by much, but we'll do the best we can. Top it off. Guangdong needs the money. I don't know which one to do. I kind of want to do this one because I want to give Guangdong giving them money. And control the, uh, over the value of several well, Yasuda assets means we can set the value as high as low as we want, and no one would be the wiser, of course. If this is discovered, a government would be in a scan of epic proportions, but as they say, nothing ventured, nothing gained, and there's much to be gained here. The last gasp. All around Matsuzawa, the sound of his firm uh, heeled shoes colliding with the ground echoed out the solid concrete walls. Let all be dragged itself into crescendo as he reached the entrance of what had been Grand Koshu headquarters of Yasuda. Now it seemed more like a morgue sterilized of life. Across the room, the sight of a cleaner twitched in the corner of his eye. Nothing else moved. But still, and it still felt strange to Matsuzawa. Every waking moment, his mind had been flooded by some rush or other. At times, it had been almost overwhelming. He decided to let go of any preoccupations in his mind, embracing the calm oblivion, however. He soon realized that his mind had stopped his body had followed. 
There's no time for such lack of action, as there never was, so Matsuzawa heaved himself from the spot he lingered and headed towards the elevator. In a sparse office nestled within one of the many towering stories, a group of accountants haggled among themselves as they hunched over the work. They had been happy for the task of itemizing each and every one of Yasuda's remaining Guantong assets, and they were doing an efficient job of it, not one of them had noticed Matsuzawa's arrival. After anger almost crept up on the chief executive, but he stifled his best he could. A sight of empty rooms and flickering lights and endless rows of numbers clipped to et ledgers had reduced his spirit again. He had hoped that this helplessness could be ignored. Every time he had determined to persist, it invaded his mind again. Something had to be done. Matsuzawa no knew that the total destruction of his life's work could, would come, but he could never be satisfied with his knowledge alone. He could still make or take action with what, with what power was available in his grasp and make one last move before the inevitable. To make a sale, first he must decide his worth, and then going once. The value of the assets have been determined, and the auctioneers are restless. The auction is about to begin, and with the, the, with the growth of our coffers, it's, start, it's time to start bidding. And there goes Mr. Adolf Hitler. Goodbye, Hitler boy. Best practice versus best interest. Accountants are rarely men of intrigue. They are much more suited to the grinding toil of offices than the cutthroat back alleys of politics. So when one of these men was met with an offer to overvalue assets, he was appraising. I took little consideration before he refused. When pressured further, he readily threatened to leak the issue. It did not matter to him that the man giving him the offer was a chief executive. Despite this accountant's calm demeanor in the presence of the chief executive, he soon succumbed to a, a dazed and dizzied state outside as he headed back home. He assured himself of the knowledge that his actions had been the professional thing to do. His reputation was untarnished. He was far from safe, but he was a decent man. The thoughts fogged into his mind so badly that it took no notice of the van hurling down the road towards him. The screeching of the brake snapped from him snapped him from his mind, but there was already nowhere for him to escape to. Dungs flung open, doors flung open, the boots collided with the floor, hands grabbed out towards him, his wide eyes looked to the streets for someone to help him, yet he knew that it had already been late when he had left the meeting. By now it was too dark for anyone or any sensible person to be out. The last rounds of light were soon blocked out as a blindfold was tightly bound around his head. Well the tomorrow came, the thought of what happened next would be shattered and impossible to piece together. You cannot tell the bruises on his back were from the rough side, or rough ride, or a hail of blows that came after. The slashes on his front, however, were altogether easier to place. What was clearest in his mind, however, was the voice of one of his men, with a Japanese accent was, like his face, barely masked, and permeated with rage. They dumped him back on the streets with nothing but his wounds and knowledge that unless he did what he was told, he was sent to the bottom of the Pearl River cl clasps in concrete boots. Who could send such vile people? Who could? Serving Civil War, not bad. It's only 15. It's not much corruption, but we'll do whatever we can to st stymie it. Uh, product cycle, huh? Nice. Almost 12% growth. That's pretty good. Going once. The price is set. As the game is going to lag super hard for the Germans to go kaboom! Which is, you know, inevitable. Ah. <sighs> Very nice. Playing for favorites. Uh, most of the assets of Yasuda will most likely be bought by companies here in Guangdong, as many of the companies have members on the Legislative Council. We have an opportunity to get them on our side. We can simply pay, pay, pay favorites with the companies on the Council, selling them the assets in return for a few favors from the Council members. Nobody said the auction has to be fair, after all. Ah, Sony's appeal. On the wake of the Yasuda collapse, Sony has risen to take on its after effects. It is magnanimously, magnanimously, Offer to employ former Yasuda employees and find places for them in its workforce. While many have pointed out that Yasuda and Sony operate in the very different industries, the latter is the reason that, that these employees are no longer use, less useful. Even if they may be out of their depths, there is additional benefit to Sony's offer. Discontent and unemployment would be significantly lessened. Of course, we accept their bark and they expect political backing in return, but surely that can be resolved later. Restructuring, huh? Nice. A foundation built on rice. Give me a break. Yamauchi sat surrounded by sheets upon sheets of documents and fiscal reports, bearing an exasperated expression on his face. He placed his hand on his forehead and let out a sigh of fatigue as he once again reviewed the compiled data gathered on his desk. He could not believe it, the endeavor to crumble like a fragile house of cards knocked over by erratic tides of the market. The entry into the Inchoi, an undeveloped market of instant rice, had been a costly misstep. The Nintendo Corporation was now hemorrhaging funds as it made evident to him by the seemingly countless red arrows and negative figures littered across the charts. Instead of being the beneficiary of an unexploited realm of consumer demand, Triumph were the established. The competitors had failed. He had joined them in ignominious defeat. Yamauchi sifted through piles of records with ir irritation, desperate to discover where the critical mistake had been made. He stopped abruptly. On the string of failures and initiatives unraveled themselves like a carpet of thorns in his mind. He had omitted a crucial factor within his original concept. The fact that rice was a cheap and plentiful commodity, requiring minimal processing unlike noodles, making it abundant on store shelves. Additionally, the cooking of the rice took significantly less effort and time compared to noodles, discouraging most consumers from bothering to purchase alternative varieties, something they failed to see. He mostly slushed back into his chair with dismay. 
thoughts of the future and the past clouding his perturbed head. As he continued to reflect upon his defeat, the admired discouragement within his head began to dissipate. It not be the end for Nintendo's potential is vast and boundless. Back to the drawing board. Advancements in power, efficiency, technology. Great news from the executives and engineers of Guangdong is products and devices increasing the overall efficiency of power usage has been released for the fiscal year. These products can save consumers and businesses massively in the monthly energy costs, all while not compromising total output. Sure, the Pearl River Delta will be the shining center of the sphere. I may think my light bulbs are brighter now. Not bad. Not bad at all. Chaos and us and oh no, who could have seen such a thing coming? The cold is comfort. Matsuzawa Takauji? Takuji. Uh, can't remember anything in his career as big as Yasuda's insolvency or its coming sell-off. He doubts any. Of his contemporaries, he can't either. That's worth noting. Uh, or remembering that Guangdong is his own entity, separate from Japan. Uh, he thinks. Over here, it's the companies that rule. It is the companies who are decide. Perched from the skyscraper headquarters, it is he who looks upon... It is they who look upon Yasuda with hunger in their eyes. When they pick the flesh off the bones, it'll be of no use to anybody. He's to be a decent observer, of course. Uh, someone will be suddenly told your time is over and be replaced by a more memorable face. He stops himself for a moment. There's perhaps a cool comfort to being a distant observer, even now. There's little consequences for what he does, and perhaps if he sends a few messages, call the headquarters for a, of a company, Takuji, uh, shuffles through the papers he's leafing through. All the assets that are to be sold are listed in these pages. One call, and he would be in contact with the leader, telling them of the best cuts of meat, where the money would be best spent in advantage in a world of cutthroats. A lone thought stands, though. Among the flood of possibilities, what about the caller? Takuji is so uncertain. The caller's not never was forthright about his views in the matters beyond exactly what he told them. Would he appreciate such a thing, or would he be displeased and punish him for crossing a line Takuji who never knew was there? A stream is his own, and he's free to tell his own scales. Or tell the scales. Going twice. All bids have been set up over Yasuda's assets. Many, especially from the remains of Yasuda, are decrying this as opportunism. While we cannot deny such accusations, the fact remains that this is the best way to make use of the resources now that the company has collapsed. Yeah, why not? Restructuring Chief Executive Masuzawa had uh, remained seated as Morita Akeo was ushered into his office, a secretary closing the door behind him. It took a genius to figure out what Morita was here for, but he puzzlingly, puzzlingly insisted on meeting during the day in his offices. With the upcoming auction of Yasuda, you must realize the walls of ears, Morita Mat Matsuzawa said tartly. What business could be so pressing you're all right with that? How are your employees doing, Matsuzawa? Morita replied with a question out of left field. Have they figured out where they'll be going after the auction? You must worry for your former subordinates. I admit I've, it's been on my mind. With an economy like this, Matsuzawa remarked hesitantly, but those are my and my employees. If there's a sort out, I don't see why you're, where you're going with. Sony and Chung Kong are always looking to hire good people, you know. Morita press onwards. Mashusita. Matsushita and Fujitsu usually get the lion's share of Japanese hires, but no matter how this auction goes, a lot of your people will need a new employment. We'd be happy to help no matter how the auction goes. Matsuzawa eyed Morita warily, out of all the goodness of your heart, I'm sure. Well, Morita smiled sheepishly. The best thing I could do for your employees is make sure they have stayed employed exactly how they were, doing the jobs they know best, but the auction makes that a bit difficult, you understand. The two fell silent, staring at each other, willing the other to speak next. Finally, Morita stood up and made the further door. Think about it. Sold! This suit is gone. It has been swept into the dustbin of corporate history, remembered only as the instigator of corruption and the crumbling of economies across Asia. The effects of Yasuda's collapse are still being felt, but the company itself is no more. Guangdong waits for no man of corporation, at least of all a dead one. It is but a new beginning for our state. God damn, it's high. We're, we're, are we maxed out? As a 47%. Yeah, we're literally maxed out. Oh, we're almost maxed out. We're just 0.004% close to being maxed out. Holy crap. That's very close. And the South African War, but no one really cares. Sold. Right now, I'd rather do this. Um, do we need any more? No, we're, we're pretty good with what we have right now, so. Uh, do we need more? We have, how do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. There you go. Nice. Surplus is not bad. A decent amount of political power, but limited collateral damage. It seems that the Yasuda collapse has single-handedly brought our domestic tensions to a boiling point across East, a East China Sea. Thousands of displaced home island aristocrats, businessmen, and residents of Alok alike flock to us every day for any semblance of a normal life, a certain burden on our infrastructure. Meanwhile, on our own streets, our attempts at economic first aid have inevitably uh, provoked a backlash in the form of worsening dissident activity, paralyzing government institutions, and bringing financial recovery to a standstill. The longer we will stand, the less likely we will survive the eventual fallout. It's imperative that we immediately begin formulating our approach to the issues at hand, and so deliver our people 
Both within and without the cider borders, a satisfactory solution, no matter what the cost may end up being. You never know. Increase the next box minimum base. That's not bad. Um, I don't mind sacrificing a little bit. Oh, but the growth is not bad too. Mm, it feels more challenging for workers. Ooh. Monthly Chinese government support minus 0.5% for growth as well. We can try that one. So we went down to 44%. 79%. Next interest. Ooh, you know what? We're gonna do that too. We might, let's try to market in China maybe next. That's all the stuff I want from them. Uh, Sony buys Yasuda for a price. The auction of Yasuda's ass has been handled with all of the delicacy of a butcher. Carving of a hog's carcass with a prized building or a business unit priced and doled out to the bidding buyers the affection or sentiment. The fallen gavel heralded another part of Yasuda's corpse sold for parts, striking home with a resounding thud of a cleaver's sundering bone. As the final bang rang out on the hush auction floor, the assembled press tallied the winning bids, which... Uh, seeing which, other tycoons would walk away the lion's share. They turned to see Morita Akeo remaining in his seat, arms folded and lifts purse, even as Matsushita and Ibuka decamped towards the exits. Chief Executive Matsuzawa locked eyes with Morita for a second, a flash of anger crossing the Sony's executive's face, before the reporters mobbed them for comments. Uh, Matsuzawa walked off stage without a word, smir a smirk tugging at the edge of his mouth. The transfer of ownership conferred power as well as assets, as it stood to reason. The press had no further interest in Matsuzawa, but they were certainly interested in the king's ransom. Sony had paid for Yasuda's assets, a sum that Matsuzawa would put to good use. Nothing life is free, Morito. He's won the auction for the remaining assets, however, the cost proven to be too high. They will receive 5% 5 of the assets, while the remaining 4% is distributed to Matsushita and Fujitsu. Oh. Is this supposed to give the other one to the other group? No more, no less. Wang Dong needs money. Muscovine goes bye bye. And then what? Maintain public order? The tsunami. In the wake of Yusuda's collapse, hundreds of thousands of workers in Japan have been enthroned in economic desperation. This, unsurprisingly, has launched a new migration of businessmen and their families into Guangdong. Many are fleeing the consequences of the collapse, whether that is debt payments, jilted lovers, political enemies, or simply the shame that they have lost everything. While we're taking in as many as we can, that we are still pulling in re still in recovery from the economic crisis, it's putting a strain on our coffers and to take care of them. As more subtle, we have no choice but to take action upon these settlers. Maintaining public order in the street. And the government hall are two sides of the same coin, they say, and all it takes is a hellfire of economic turmoil to devour it all. All the intensification of police deployment and the authorization of camp Bate operations, it just isn't enough. With every passing day, for every hundred people thrown out of their jobs or apartments, a hundred more are swayed to our subversive elements slipping through our fingers and running rampant across the map. The side of demonstrators and protesting of the sword steps of government buildings is degraded into an ir irritating irregularity, a nuisance distracting loyal officials from performing their actual duties for the sake of our recovery. What we've been doing isn't enough, but it's still not too late to catch up. We have to begin drafting plans for action and take matters firmly into our own hands before the camp I can take them into their own. Otherwise, the credibility of our government will suffer. Carry on, Sergeant, at 16, 16 17 hours. End of questioning. Muttered Sergeant Kawasaki, Kawasaki Minori. Scribbled in his notebook. Officer Yoshida will escort you out of the building once you leave this room. Thank you for your time, Mr. Nakamura. My pleasure, sir. Said the witness, bowing. I'm just doing my part for the community. With that, he left. Lieutenant Ito entered the room with less than two minutes after as... Uh, Kawasaki had his head buried in reports and no taking well. Anything worthwhile, he's asked. Possible idea in a truck that fled the scene last night, like carrying an illicit cargo, damaged pretty bad. Model, color, plates, but I'm not gonna like this, am I? Asked the lieutenant. Only got the plates from one witness. Everyone uh, else said it was too dark to see. Guy named Nakamura Yusuke. What happened you from the length of your arm? All drug crime, too. Guy like that normally be hiding up from us after all this, even if he was innocent. Yet he's coming to us with a golden ticket out of the blue. Something's not right here, and I think we're being used. If it leads us to the perp, it leads us to the perp, surely, said Lieutenant Ito. Even if they are playing with us, it's best we leave, the best lead we have, and we need to track these shipments yesterday. Uh, I suppose I'll send these plates to surveillance. Something bigger as a player, but that witness knows something. Hmm. Well. Well, let's see. Crack them down. Send them to surveillance for now. I have the agitators. Enforce a curfew. Increase the control of this police control by more. Turn a blind eye. 
you got Yakuza and y Triad support. Crackdown on organized crime. I'll, I'll probably go with this one. Decreases corruption level by 8%. Oh man, well, that's a lot of money though. Round up the agitators and force curfew. Um, that's a lot of increase and decrease. You get 1%. I think I probably round, want to round up the agitators. Security, use of security. Uh. As a matter of fact, we do have a rough list in our hands of the most prominent faces of the dissenters. From radicals advocating workplace reforms to Chinese nationals rabble rousers to non king sympathizer demanding Russia cessation of Guangdong to their legitimate government. We simply chose to turn a blind eye to those people who amounted to little significance of the past. <clears throat> but extreme times call for extreme measures. Everyone will be tracked down and put under custody to prevent them from fanning the flames already burning away with little luck of our domestic stability. We're well aware this won't be a silver bullet to the unrest. All we need to get is the message out. Warn the anti populace against stepping out of line and buy ourselves enough time to decide our next course of action. Oh, more police control. The carousel go round and round. The orders were to confiscate any cash I happened upon. For the good of the state, the boys back at the station are sat with the snowing smirks. Lam Huan Xion, of course, had heartlessly joined in the smirking party too, for the good of the state. More like for the good of the master's pockets. But the smirk had never turned to him at the checkpoint. What would it, he knew. The very instant he laid his hands upon the 1,000 yen stack that was committing, it spent the no amount of good for the state could ever excuse. Yet even this moment of lucidity failed to restrain him from stuffing the cash into his pocket without so much as a hint of remorse. Right before the mortified faces of the middle-aged Japanese nobleman and his daughter, and then proceeding to respectfully tell them to just F off to somewhere else. Right after taking a whole night's two, a whole two nights worth of hotel rent from them too. Hopefully their buddy Suzuki Taiji can help with all that. Lamb's gaze. Lingered on after the duo as they hurried away to the edge of the cordons. And after that, when the nausea finally caught up to him, excused himself from the checkpoint, darted behind the barren hill top 50 meters away, and immediately to the torrents of the bile of guilt of absolute self-loathing, gushed out of his mouth at once. So this is what the oh-so-honorable officer had stooped to. Outright effing robbery, roared one voice in his head. Served the Japanese bandits well, sneered another, on and on, and the dual voices collided and reverberated in Lamb's coal. A seven and another swirl before his eyes under the carousel of grey, but which voice should he listen to? He didn't know, he didn't want to know. And who was he anyway, uh, effing nobody, having sold his soul to the silicon purgatory long ago, to judge what's right and what's wrong with anyone more? As the convulsions in his stomach finally came to a halt, Lamb steadied his breath and exhaustedly turned his head back to the shuffling rags and makeshift tents, landing the Koshu seat seaside before him. Another twenty refugees have been processed in his absence, it seemed, or thirty. He was too tired to keep count anyway. Yeah, I'll probably do this one too. Cracking on organized crime, we have let the underground run oh, underground world run amok for too long. The triads, Yakuza, those who shared our woes and take their spoils from the rubble with glee. Reports from past weeks have indicated a drastic uptick in recruitment operations, smuggling ring activities, as well as extortion and or extortion and kidnapping of innocent citizens were still. Rumor has it that a growing number of officers within our ranks, own ranks, have been already been compromised, apparently desperate for any source of cash to make ends meet. A teller sense here. We'll put our foot down and make her stance clear, even if it's for a lost cause. We'll employ whatever we have at hand to muster up at least some semblance of resistance against such blatant violations of social order. And make it clear to all the Guangdong's essence lies in its integrity, not in shady dealings. We're going to force a curfew, but still. Round them up. Crack down. Cast them adrift. I'm going to hurt that a lot. In case the Chinese government support, though, but a safe port. What kind of business people are we to turn away new investors? What are we to turn away new blood? There's precisely no reason why we should turn these new Japanese migrants away. Many of them already take up positions in the leading companies at any time. As such, we'll give these new migrants all they need to adjust to Cantonese life, employment assistance, new housing, and most importantly, a safe haven. Crowd control. Oh, look at this. Nice. You see the shears. 35%. Yeah, we're close. Uh, yeah, we're close here, too. Nice. Um, anything else here? Corruption. Ooh. Approval. Uh, increased liquid reserves. Eh. Increases monthly base research speed by 0.5%. 30%, 85%. That's not bad. How much to do that? It's not much. I eh, would do that for funsies. Chief Executive Matsuzawa eyed the empty chair in his office. Uh, impatiently, a finger tapping on the desk restlessly. The other, Morita, Matsushita, Ibaka, and Kono Miyazaki, alternated between uh, rereading the briefings, sighed in frustration, and glowering at the door. Since uh, Commend, uh, Commissioner Takigawa will not be joining us, Matsuzawa said irritably, slapping his portfolio forward with a commanding thump, who else has a plan to get the rabble to disperse? Besides the recent protests, we still must account for this hard-line hard dissident activity. Kono Miyazaki, 
Strain is a perfectly pressed khaki uniform, dressing the gathered as a whole. We have the resources to secure the streets around the distant leaders, but not both. Hold on, Morita interrupted, wisps of white hair framing his face as Masushita nodded approvingly. We can't be deciding this without the police input. The camp Pate doesn't have sole authority. A commissioner can't be bothered to come to a meeting. They have nothing to contribute and they don't know it, Ibuka scoffed. Kuro and Miyazaki's men are more than capable, and more importantly, they are present right here, right now. My men are always at your disposal, Miyazaki said firmly. As muscle physique uh, faintly visible through his uniform's fabric, regarding each of the executives with a flinty glare, we have the experience to control crowds and make talk. And make them talk. Our methods work, and we work best without interference. Would you wait, Colonel? We'll call the police again. Yeah. Oops. I guess we have a lot less influence now. Crap. Where the storm? <coughs> Display us Cantonese Japanese. There's only so much space available for new managers or senior specialists amid the crisis. If we were to fulfill our promise with the Japanese, of course, we must displace the existing uh, ones whenever possible. This will affect the Zujin for the most part, for they are the primary demographic of the middle management, but they are a worthwhile sacrifice in terms of continued economic support. National settlement. Eh, seems like. We need that support back. Transcript, 22nd of December, 1963. Names, Tin Seong Hong. Physician, Vice Chairman of the Guangdong Republic of China Restoration Committee. Q, neither of us are getting any way, anything out of this rate, so if you just cooperate. A, so you can get back sucking after Japanese gold masters again? Great aspirations for a shameless effing race trader? What is even is China to you anymore, I wonder? Q, well, I'll tell you what it is, it's dead. Dead for heaven knows how many years anymore, and what's left right beyond our borders is nothing but a bloated corpse that can't even stand on its own two feet. And feed its own people. I'm telling you right here now, Mr. Tin, that we couldn't care about... Couldn't care less about all your Kuomontang worship, all your daydreams about sailing, sailing a Guangdong to that dude of a nation up north. Hey, don't you effing Q, but you know who do we do care about? Actual living people here who fed up with the crap you were in and up every five minutes. People who simply aren't so pointlessly obsessed with lost causes as you are and just want to survive the gosh darn crisis. People like those seven innocent children until you decided to throw those explosives onto the tra tramway. Hey, how many times do we have to tell you that none of us were in the effing Hong Kong back then? How do you get your effing facts right before you just go off swinging your donkey dick around? Q. Perhaps there's nothing more I can do. You either talk to us or your friends in the camp I talk to you. Your choice. End of excerpt. I do want to cast him adrift, but... National sentiment sounds like fun. Safe port, though. And Dora Lex uh, said Lex. Absolutely preposterous. The well dressed Stanley Ho leaned back in his chair tensely, contradicting his usual suave and easy going demeanor. Chief Executive Matsuzawa and Commissioner Tsuchida uh, Suniyasu, Kuniyasu said opposite to him, their faces stern and rigid, unwilling to allow for the man whom they perceived as a smooth charlatan to slip by the consequences of his practices. A sumptuous tea set rested neatly upon the mahogany desk of the Chief Executive, drops of hot. Uh, chamomile tea dripping slowly under the ashtray from the spout of the teapot. Stanley Ho picked up the porcelain teacup placed before him, hot steam emanating from the warm liquid, and continued. You do know that the activities of the police around Guangdong are suppressing the craft of the hard-working honorable and businessmen, correct? Especially as the livelihoods of people deteriorate, the self-righteous and bellicose response temporarily silenced the room with only the dripping of tea remaining audible. The unnerving tension was shattered by the voice of Matsuzawa. If we described underground smuggling and illicit businesses as honorable, you certainly would be correct, replied Matsuzawa. Obviously unsatisfied with Ho's conduct, fidgeting with the hands of an empty teacup. The voice of Commissioner Tsuchida followed, his strident tone making Ho mildly uncomfortable. Guangdong, as of current, is, making, is between a rock and a hard place, however. Even as a society is being dragged through the gutter, on all other forces of anarchy or chaos to prevail. The laws exist for a reason, and the police come to work every day for a reason. There's no excuse. After continuing a brief conversation, Stanley Ho quietly stood up and exited the room without an extra word. The law may be harsh, but it is the law. Certain actions are inexcusable. You got through quite a few focuses, but not that many. Weather the storm. Or displace them. Probably need to displace them. Yeah. Despite our doubts, despite the overwhelming strain on our law enforcement, everything worked out fine. The fates of our Jap and his compatriots have been descended upon. Pop and our rest has been quelled somewhat, and we have stabilized our domestic situation enough for us to set connections back up. Brave the waters once more, survive the raging maelstrom that barely weeks ago threatened to tear us asunder. A few more finishing touches, and Guangdong shall sail on. Advancements once again! This year, products uh, launches include sweet new TVs, radios, cameras, and stuff like this. Cool. Emissional minimum and maximum product interest by 5%, more profitability. Nice. I say port. Is 
leaving in the Philippines. Way less growth. Now we have a deficit. God dang it. 30% huh? That's not very much. Days until 141. So do you want to keep some political power here? We possibly can. Uh, in the meantime, we have a lot of support here. It's very easy to get the support. 49%, which is not great. And here we don't have a lot of support from the Chinese, which is not good. Oh. I should have done this earlier. No more electric reserves. No more political power, too. Um, I don't, really don't want the Yakuza here. But whatever. We need the political power for later. Because we'll get more Chinese support later when we actually market to the Chinese. Probably? The Empty Throne. Contact Chung Kong. Hail Hitachi. Definitely not that one. Part of the storm. <clears throat> Color of good things. Baron Yasukawa has been elated from the call of the chief executive. An apology, a pledge to look after the Japanese, and an invitation. Colors seem to rush back into the world. Yoshiko's face had lit up at the news, a smile he hadn't seen since they fled Japan. He donned his final suit the next morning, a silken pocket uh, chief folded neatly into the breast pocket. As he hailed a taxi, Baron Yasukawa looked, took a second to admire the vivid, vivid crimson of the Japanese flag hoisted in the front of the hotel. Truly, good things did come to those who waited. The officers of the chief executive had barely drawn any closer, even after emerging or entering the brief stretch of the Chinese and Zhujin sentiments. Uh, between the hotel and the government district, every minute drew more resentful stares from the passerby as angry at yet another Japanese interloper. Are you sure this is the right way? Baron Yasukawa asked. He thought he saw fingers pointed at him, painfully exposed in his finery. I'm sorry, I. The driver looked away from the road long enough for a taxi to slam an errant bicycle. A cry welled up from the crowd as they searched for it, their accusatory fingers turning to clenched fists as they pulled the Baron under the pavement, ripping his suit and pummeling his body. The Baron lay broken on the street, staring vacantly to the brilliant blue expanse above the gray slums of Koshu. The street was dyed a vivid crimson beneath them, the color of the, of the rising sun. Here we found hours later carrying a shakily written note. The Empty Throne. The companies and the Legislative Council have been for the foundation of the government and the economy of Guangdong ever since its conception. Colossal pillars holding up the sky. With the collapse of your suit of holdings, one of those pillars came crashing down, leaving a vacuum, requiring a suitable replacement. Now, that the question of social instability in the remnants of Yasuda's assets has, has been resolved, as someone looked towards the missing pillar, it's clear that the mind of Sony, Fujitsu, and Matsushita alone isn't enough to sustain dominance to control over the economy of Guangdong, with the Yasuda nothing but scattered and gone. Someone else would have to be chosen to reside upon the vacant throne in the Legislative Council, if only. I'm sorry, Miss Yasukawa. Of course, I'll see the insurance payout. The voice on the phone was clinical. Barrettes of warmth. You would need to present yourself in Tokyo to contest it. I see. Thank you very much. Yasukawa Yoshiko said woodenly, before hanging it up, her legs wobbling underneath her. A million thoughts raced through her mind in a single second, all containing the same two words. If only. Some were simple. If only she had tried to make their lens last a bit longer, or brought more with her. But those were few and far between, the ones that blamed her. So, if only she had pushed harder to find a job. If only she had noticed her father's vacant, distant stares. If only she had asked what was wrong. If she only tried to stop him from leaving. If only the two words repeated themselves mercilessly, a deluge of regrets pouring through a hollowed-out vessel, a disastrous call with the insurance house. I simply ripped out of the bottom, not only did her father die, but he had died in vain. The words looped endlessly, swirling through Yoshiko's mind, even as the two equally important words were lost in the churning depths. But now, a siren's beyond the ba bars. The rumble of the passing armored car echoed through the empty streets, with the shadows cast by the hurried closing of curtains, heralding the Kampate's patrols of Koshu's Chinese districts. By the order of the chief executive, a citywide curfew is now in effect, remaining in their homes until sunrise. Any violators are subject to arrest and detention. Despite having turned out the lies, Chun couldn't help but peer outside through the bars on his window. Spawn the clacky cad soldiers advancing up the streets, weapons lowered, but armed nonetheless. They fanned out across Koshu and Guangdong ever since they had scattered the protests in front of the government center with a fusillade of tear gas and a charge. They deployed in force, and Chun had made himself scarce as soon as the first few trucks had rumbled behind the police cordon. The only thing worse than being attacked by the Japanese soldiers was to disappear into the custody, and many had. The sheer numbers of the Camp Baite presence had any other murmurs of dissent, Chun couldn't put his family at risk. The reinforced Japanese presence presented an additional, more prosaic problem. There were two checkpoints between the Lee family apartment and Chun's factory, and it was assigned to the night shift for the week next week. With the curfew, it would be impossible to make it, and whatever perverse uh, gratitude Chun might have felt was balanced by the weight of the wages missed and the gnawing of his empty stomach. Even free, he was behind bars. And contact Chung Kong. 
A suggestion has been raised by the representatives of Sony in the Legislative Council on the matter of the succession of Yasuda as a spot in the council. Sony says the collapse of Yasuda has only openly demonstrated to the populace, especially the Zhujian population of Guangdong, that having the Legislative Council dominated by solely foreign Japanese companies had an exceeding amount of limitations. They claim that the stability issues faced by former Chief Executive Suzuki would only be exacerbated by continuous unsustainable model of governance and that the only succinct solution would be to give the Zhujian population more representation in the higher echelons of Guangdong, especially the council, therefore. The obvious choice would be to invite Li Kaxing and the Cheong Kong conglomerate to take the former place of Yasuda, which would fulfill all the previously mentioned goals and balance against the dominance of Matsushita and Fujitsu. Drawing the curtains, of course I understand, I'll make the arrangements. Chief Executive Matuzawa's perfunctory mechanical reply betrayed no hint of his crestfallenness, even as he set the phone down with a heavy thud. After months of no contact, the politicians like Tokyo had finally put their house in order, turning their eyes towards the economic record of the wider sphere, and they addressed him as interim chief executive. He would disappear in his history, as surely as Yasuda had. Matsuzawa let out a hollow laugh. He had kept Guangdong from sinking into a vortex of Yasuda's collapse, making the decisions Suzuki had run from, and earning the ire of those who had cut loose to save the whole, but it hadn't been enough to save him. There would be no promotion, no salvaging something from the wreckage of his parents' company collapse. His role would be to take responsibility for Yasuda's failures by sacrificing himself. Even so, a calm settled within him as the finality of what had transpired sunk in. He was still, if not for long, chief executive, and the suit's complete collapse assured the power imbalance of the power balance in the legislative council would crumble as the four companies were reduced to three. Matsuzawa smiled himself as he outlined the next meeting's agenda. Morita, Ibuka, and Matsushita might fancy themselves the next mass of Guangdong, conspire with each other to bear the one last, last one, last one left. When his arrivals wanted to hog the limelight, he would make them work for it. I may die, but the four companies are eternal. And Guangdong in the black, with the collapse of Yasuda Holdings still ravaging the economy of the uh, society of Guangdong, Chief Executive Matsuzawa had done all he could to ensure that the people in the state of Guangdong survived through these desperate times. As the assurances and worries of the past fade through the sands of time, everyone's eyes and focuses are centered towards the one direction the future. Now, that it is completely certain that the Yasuda had gone entirely defunct, Matsuzawa knows that the days of where he remained in his position are very much numbered. His successor would likely be picked soon directly from Tokyo. In the final no moments where Matsuzawa remained at the center of the limelight, he would leave the last mark on deciding the future of Guangdong, recommending a possible successor. Our, our GDP amounts from the National Spirit Institute Crest will recover by 5%. Advancements in data storage technology, great! Oh, we get 2% more political power! Ooh. Ooh. Definitely do this one and this one. The lime sh light shines. Who would have thought that a simple bowl of egg, noodle noodle egg noodles would taste as marvelous? A slippery, glossy sensation from the dough strands, doused in hot soup, expertly boiled from a grand assembly of bok choy. Peace, sprouts, and spices certainly enraptured Morita's mind with its plain yet delicate flavor, but it wasn't just the odors and the masterful cuisine of Xiong Wan's chefs that mesmerized him so. No, his, their victory, barely days ago, had been as wonderful, just as blissfully sweet. Cushing, God, who would have thought, he muttered his ecstasy bubbling in his heart, and lifted his gaze from the bowl to the sole companion seated before him. And instantly he felt his eyes grow misty. Was it the steam? He didn't know, and he didn't care either. Chung Kong, after all these years, was being overshadowed, underrepresented, and forced to live in the shadows of Ibuka and who knows how many others, was the last beginning to see the light of day, and that's all that mattered. Much was all did the greatest favor we could ever ask for. These was was trembling with exultation. No, two, no reason to keep it down when there's only two of them left. I just want to say, Akio, now that everything's brightening up for once, you can most certainly count on me, and all of our allies from across the nation, to do all that I can to curtail Fujitsu and Matsushita's labor exploitations, and see that their tentacles reach no further than their existing associates. We have power, and we can, and we'll make all the difference in the world, Morita chuckled. Think about it. We can rescue so many other people from Ibuka's clashes, or clutches. There's just so much we can do. Even the legislative council to a better place for once. Indeed, Lee echoed, his gaze turning to the horizon to Hong Kong's red and orange neon canopy, teeming with electric life and gleaming through the eatery's milky vapors, and perhaps, perhaps, Akio, your chance, our chance has finally come. So in his transfer the share of Yasuda assets to the trusted ally, Chung Kong, allowing them to take part in the legislative council once all is said and done. Suzuki 12. We have 22 seats. That's not bad. And Shadows Lurk. What have you done? The floor went flying and opened in a thud, and the stormed Ibuka Masaru, face gleaming with sweat and contorted into the crimson fury. How dare you open the door? He dashed his way to Matsuzawa's desk. For those two pieces of absolute slime to just waltz sin, he grabbed a stone faced Matsuzawa by the collar and screwed up the entire legislative council with their brainless dribble. He lifted his clenched and tripling right fist to the man's face, yet too mentally exhausted to deliver the blow. He should have known that. Matsuzawa Takuji was another maggot in the pile that kowtowing to bleeding hearts was all the spineless man's ever good for. 
You heard what Ubaka said. Behind him, a frowning Matsushita Masaharu, uh, student of the office, his trademark smile nowhere to be seen. I hope you know what you're doing, Matsuzawa, because you're by surrendering a legislative club to these soft minded sympathizers, you have jeopardized the interests of our Japanese compatriots and practically thrown whatever chance of passing anything is actually good for Guangdong's commerce down the gutter. He sighed before recomposing himself. I believe the course correction is in order, or all, else all of us will sink with the ship. What do you want? Matsuzawa muttered, unflinching. What I'm saying is, it's time we did away with the whole four companies nonsense, don't you think? Another sigh escaped Matsuzawa's mouth. Nothing stopping us from inviting another fellow competitor to enter the foray, after all. Something of a counterbalance against Morita and Lee. Something easy to control and equally easy to dispose of, an outsider. Ibuka unclenched his fist and barely managed a knowing nod. The bowling fury slowly departing from it in its place unclouded lucidity and a curiosity, curious serenity. If, uh, if this is what it stakes, then I know exactly who to ask. Burnout. Oh god. Sergeant Kawasaki's, uh, Kawasaki's team arrived just as a balaclava clad men had started pouring gasoline on the truck as they were looking for, getting the call to trip junkyard just outside of Kowloon. The scene that involved played out much like the stages of grief. Firstly, they now have any involvement in the listed affairs and fierce demands for a warrant or evidence. Then a sob story about a disabled aunt and vehicle insurance, depression, whatever was dropped, however, was dropped in favor of an exchange of fists, a contest. Uh, a contest to arm police easily won after several hours in a GPF infirmary, and then interrogation cell acceptance finally emerged. By the time the police had arrived, all the valuable cargo had already been unloaded. The little material evidence remained, and besides a shipping label that had managed to remain inside the truck. The opium fire had originally come from a small warehouse off the edge of Port Shorty, officially registered as dealing predominantly with agricultural imports and preserved food. Several prisoners, all Japanese with known gang affiliations, were listed as management personnel with, with other warehouse, though all refused to confess, dismissing the evidence as circumstantial and demanding the presence of an attorney. A warrant to raid the warehouse was drafted almost immediately. Though Kowalski, Kowalski, Kawasaki continued to cradle it tenderly in his hands. The people they caught today were local boys, small fry. The opium supply was clearly not coming from Guangdong itself. Bigger forces were at Pele, but could he afford to let the immediate slip lead slip? Raid the warehouse. You might find more there. Long dong in the black, finally. Well, not really, not really. Oh god, Jesus Christ. Oh god. But we're doing better. Oh, investigate. Like, oh. I have to do it. This is try I gotta do both of these. How am I supposed to get more political power if we keep spending it? Like, bro. Looking pretty good here. Oh, we have more police force, too. That's nice. Yeah, can't buy tie influence. Um, police emphasis is super low in a lot of these regions, unfortunately, so. Guangdong in the block. Nothing to do. There's barely anything to do for once, Takuji notes. It seems like everyone else is in his office, even the objects inside of Nick taking notice as well. Silence pervades his surroundings. Not even the air that he breathes makes noise. A bit unsettling, he thinks, but no matter. Setting himself down on the chair, he reaches over for the lone papers in his mailbox. Off from the let go, all just memos notifying him of the date of the meeting to choose his successor. His successor. Who would that be? Matsuzawa thinks to himself. It seemed obvious to him enough that they will pick from one of the four, five companies, he corrects his thought. Well, it seems obvious that everyone who will be picked out of the five, either Ibuka, Morito, or Matsushita, will be the chief executive after him. He smiles as if ruefully. The very same man who held his government together during this disaster. The phone rings, interrupting his musings. Lazily picking it up, he recites the usual pleasantries expected of his position. The caller then tells him of his identity, and edged with a sense of expectancy. Matsuzawa had been expecting this. The chief executive strains immediately. Have you done enough? Have you saved yourselves? Takuji's voice breaks slightly. He winces at his tone, and a thought runs through his mind, chastising him. The man assures him that they've done what they can, was necessary, and all that they could. Do not worry about your safety, the caller reminds him, Takuji. I've arranged for it. He releases a sigh. He releases a sigh. He'll be fine, of course. But at what cost to the people around you? Alone, uh, worms in the forefront. But think, the balance of power shifts in the legislative council, and the four companies become five. Koma Kenichiro becomes leader for the fascist party. Manchurian executive. Umin miscellaneous income plus 0.3 billions. Ooh. But then what? The orchard seed. The YS-11 cargo planes landed one after another, an endless stream trickling out of the tarmac at Koshu Airport, forming a neat line in front of the cargo terminal. The orchid em emblem of the Empire of Manchuria was stenciled under the fuselages. The mustard yellow shining against the gunmetal gray, even the planes disgorged pallet after pallet of cargo crates bearing the circular emblem of Hitachi Limited. Along with the crates came the Hitachi workmen, an army of Manchurian Chinese men scurrying meekly about under the watchful eye of their Japanese taskmasters. Uh, they, they efficiently loaded the cargo onto the waiting trucks, even as the native porters and uh, st Steve Doors of Koshu watched guardedly from the shade of the terminal building. Inside Koshu itself, a fleet of bus buses, limousines, and kenpai type trucks pulled up outside the vacated Yasuda headquarters. The outline of its insignia is still visible, for the sun and rain never had the chance to stain the concrete. 
Mizuji and the Japanese expatriates outside just watch as the Manchurian men filed into their new nest, burrowing into the Koshu cityscape under the protection of the dreaded Kenpai Tai. That evening, the civil business elite of Guangdong welcomed Hitachi's president, Komaya Kenichiro. Ladies and gentlemen, we come in peace, Komaya stated, with a practice cheer rarely masking the cold stiffness of his champagne toes. He was met in with a staff of applause and lukewarm handshakes. The sole exception was Kono Miyazaki of the Kenpai Tai, who had a rare smile on his face, one that Komaya returned wholeheartedly in a base of species. Though the, the, through the struggle, they survived. As chaos and misery of the aftermath, the Yasuda Crest began to subside, factories began to open as the co oppressed spirit spirit's economy began to restabilize, life began to return to normal. A better normal than what it might have been had the RLSO been outright repealed rather than merely delayed, as so as things improved. The day by day rhythm went back to the norms of the pre Yasuda time for the countless families, the Lee family is a textbook example of the return. As Lee Chun returned to work, he reflected on the state of affairs his family was going through. Fortunately, they had managed to send both Hey and Wei Wai back to school and getting back to work themselves. That was probably one of the bigger positives in a life in which there were not many of those to be found. Morale in the family was decent. Chun's father and mother smiled uh, more frequently than usual. Their widest smiles reserved for when they were proud of their children or trying to comfort them. Hey and Wei, or Wai, so went back to studying. Hey, in particular, was beginning to get bored of the curriculum after the joy that came from being able to go back to school were off. Chun feared that not much could be done about that. Despite the improvements, Chun remembered there were still the vicissitudes of daily life in the heckle that was Guangdong, backbreaking work, abusive of overseers, a dead end life, the whole lot. This was not a way uh, to live well, but there was not much Chun could do about it. He and his family would have to troop on. So they did, finding solace in one along another uh, in another one along the way. Back on the grind. Ooh, that would be good to do as well. We're still up 40%, but it should go down by quite a bit. Almost 20% here. Is it 20%? 12? Uh, 19 and a half, 21 percent is going to drop down pretty freaking heavily, which is something we love. And I apologize for this video being longer than normal. It just it, it is what it is. It I knew this video would be longer, but I just wanted to get to the next focus. Goes to the milestone or millstone. It's here. It's them. The fluttering pink banners, the blaring gongs and cymbals, the dazzling confetti and vermilion gold paper mache lines are dancing their way into the Chung Wan's boulevards and alleyways, bringing the wonderful, wonderful news wherever they go. Chung Kong's enterprise's most recent nationwide sales campaign, the most extravagant in its entire history, has gone into full throttle. While Matsushita, Fujitsu, and Sony glitter high and mighty from the skylines above, Chung Kong prefers to dominate the ground below at the pink lace supermarkets, pink lace warehouses, and pink lace housing agencies that impeccably dress salesmen and saleswomen stand. Greeting curious passerbys with the cheeriest of smiles and answering their inquiries in equal parts spotless and endearing Cantonese. The instant the murmuring and consenting nods began bubbling up, so it comes the time to show these potential customers and recruits inside, and give them a well-deserved tour through column after column of catalogs and position offers. Zhuzhen, Chinese, doesn't matter, and Chong Kong, there's a place for everyone. The average Japanese noble, however, is perfectly forgiven to spit on it all and go about his day. Yeah, I'm sure. He would snicker as if Lee Kaohsiung would have pulled all that money to his crap he had not hitch hitchhiked into the leg co on Marita's back. It's just all one giant merchandising ploy, one pitiful attempt by the little factory owner to cater to the bottom of half of the pyramid. He'd be entirely right. How else would have Lee, a native-born son of Guangdong, answer the woes and interests of those he owed his fate, his fame, fortune, and his entire existence to? Right now, at least the grumbles and jeers wouldn't reach Lee's ears anyways. Before the mirror within his chamber, the Zhujian tycoon stood, adjusting his time one last time under the early morning lights. Wouldn't it look snap if from now on, after all, there'd be plenty of special meetings to attend to look forward to? Money makes ghosts turn the mill, indeed. Happy February, everybody. Vetsuka at 964 Economic Review. Oh, man. Chief Executive Matsuzawa Takuji and Council General Takashima Masuo uh, sat silent in their seats, size shifting from one another to the floor or to anywhere else. Neither was particularly keen to open today's meeting, a formality observed for the sake of formality, even as Yasuda's collapse had robbed both men of their time and sanity in equal abundance. Even though Guangdong's performance this year had fallen short of what we discussed last year, Takashima finally ventured, removing his glasses with a wary hand. I think we would both claim extenuating circumstances are to blame. <coughs> Chief Executive Matsuzawa Taku Takuji nodded silently, stifling a bitter chuckle at Takashima's assessment. Even if Tokyo proper had been supremely unhelpful, having Takashima acknowledge the utter bedlam that had followed Yasuda's collapse was more than he'd ever hoped for. Be that as it may, Takashima continued, replacing his glasses with a sigh, Tokyo has communicated that they'll expect Guangdong to do its part in the sphere's economic recovery. Takashima looked exhausted, having spent most of the year, past year fighting for resources from Tokyo, even as Japan has itself plunged in an economic and political meltdown. Chief Executive Matsuzawa Takuji hoped that the coming year would be slightly easier for both of them, now that the Yusuda collapse was behind them and the company started uh, looking back to the future. The air in the room still remained heavy and still, even as the clock ticked relentlessly onwards. We should get both get back to work. To the things that change. <clears throat> 
The cargo trucks lay scattered along the lane, greeting the Lam Hao Xion just as they had bid him farewell so long ago. The men hurling the bundle of oysters into the freight cars, too, went on without so much as a frown upon their faces. Business as usual, it seemed, just as Ah Kuang had told. But then Lam stopped on the gas pedal and plunged further into the array of houses and shanty towns, and immediately the facade of normalcy itself tore clean off. Greeting him now was a sight of disheveled men in workwear sweeping at their doorsteps, of bandits roaming the roads with clubs and torches in hand, and everything he had only saw fueled the anxiety sipping in his heart. He had received a single letter from back home, not for an entire year, two hours along the Kowloon Koshu Railway, and neither on the dusty road, just to find out why. Seizing his this long overdue seven day respite from his nightmare for post, but somehow he wasn't sure if he wanted to anymore. It was only natural. He kept muttering to himself, the crops grown via Sudak spares nobody. After all, this small seaside f fishing village he called home had had his fate chained firmly to the dazzling metropolis of Hong Kong, only a river plus a carpet of hills away. The pearl he had de had devoured truckloads of men taken from the village's homes without remorse or reward, leaving those who'd been left behind in woeful yearning, with no choice but to cling on to the paychecks scattered in the wind and whatever else the faraway men in suits cared to spare for them. It is any wonder, then, that the instant the great city above the clouds goes up in flames, everything else burns with it. As only naturally kept muttering as his aged patrol car inched towards its destination, he had felt his muscle tensing up and trembling. Whatever was going on at home, he had no way of knowing. Why wouldn't they let at least give him their assurances? To let him know that they're doing fine, or is there even anyone left to write the letters at all? Nazi crept up Lamb's stomach. As he braced for whatever horror is awaiting him. No, it isn't natural. Whatever's going on over there, heavens, please let them be safe. Then his loved ones came into view, and he breathed a sigh of relief. And things that won't. Hey. Lam met with the incandescent glare of the second oldest uncle, the tide of the confusion crashing onto him right back. What was that even on about? He opened his mouth, but then he saw the pen and paper laid on the wooden table and it hit him. They've been writing to him the whole time. The black mail blackout had been simply because none of the mailmen wanted to do their jobs anymore. Relatable, Lamb sighed. I would have loved to write back, uncle, he replied as calmly as possible. It's just that none of the letters ever found their way to... Stop BSing me, the giant callous laid hands. Uh, yanked on Lamb's collar, and instinctively Lamb winced. Moss stood up, tears welling in her eyes, wrinkled eyelids. Brother, please. After you and your nonsense, Lamb Han Soon. Uncle Thunder's roars and spit. Drop its tail down Lamb's face. Insolent, effing disgrace. Thinks he can just die merrily with those jackals on his own family's corpse. Uh, if only you think you ever sold your soul to. He turned his gaze with a badge upon Lamb's shoulder of the golden Bahunia insignia gleaming under the sunlight to that thing. It roars turned into sobs as the man collapsed into, onto his knees in tears. Lamb stood wordlessly, numbness washing over him once more. The Bahuinia. Bahuinia. Yes, a blessing and a curse. His salvation from Hong Kong and darnation to Koshu, the thing that gifted him his new life yet kept on racing his old. A hybrid of bastardization like what he, Hayashi Kozen, had become. He lowered his head uh, and surveyed himself a single stroke of lapsus among the gray tattered canvas. Uncle was right. He could have easily written home on his own volition without waiting for anything from them. He could have shown he cared, yet he never bothered to had he. Lam screwed his eyes shut and kneeled to the ground, too. He could feel it bit by bit. He was beginning to leave his roots, his loved ones behind. Bit by bit, he was beginning to forget. But new accommodations. Chung Kong enters the Legislative Council. We extend a warm welcome to our newest colleagues from the Chung Kong Enterprises and President Li Kaohsiung. The voice of Chief Executive Matsuzawa, increasingly ignored in anything but a formal capacity, now that his vases were so clearly numbered, was quickly drowned out by the sudden cacophony in the Legislative Council chamber. The cheers from the Sony's supplicants, the cheers from Fujitsu's followers, and the pocket of silence from Matsusa Matsushiva's men. The reaction seemed amplified to Li Kaohsiung as he stood to be recognized, bowed twice as simple before sitting down. As the session closed, Li walked up to the, each of the tycoons, paying his respects to each in turn. Welcome to the Legislative Council, Matsushita said noncommittally, nodding his head politely with a plastic face or smile fused to his face. If you're looking for friends, I'm afraid you're in the wrong place, but there's always time for good business. You finally made it, Kashi, Morita had come clear, looking for him immediately afterwards, beaming from ear to ear and clasping Lee's hand jovially. It all starts from here. Finally, the push past his hesitation, uh, pulling his feet before Ibuka, who looked up from, his, from him at his seat, arms folded. I suppose I should compliment you for pulling yourself out this far, but I'm afraid I'm not such a sentimental man, Ibuka sneered. Here's some advice. As your new colleague, don't disappoint me. The tycoon from Chong Kong will find his voice, and I think at that... I'm not going to complain that there's too much reading, but like Jesus Christ, it, we're like fourth episode in and we're barely in 1964. But if you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. And we'll see what else we have in terms of or, the state of Guangdong. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.